welcome back to my channel. So back about a year ago, I filmed this kind of video and I said that I wasn't gonna do another one until we actually went ahead and moved just because things were not really gonna change in here. Oh, how wrong I was. I've had a couple of losses and I've reshuffled things around in here and I'm really happy with how it's looking. So I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys but 2024 is the year of just decluttering, being a bit more minimal, appreciating what I've got, and also realizing that I can love and appreciate certain animals without having to own all of them. I remember when I filmed one of my first ever pet room tours, I got a comment saying this is not a pet room because you only have like three species in there. It was a room, it has pets in, just pets in, so it was a pet room and just because I don't have 10 different species of snakes or frogs or mammals in here it's still a pet room and I've scaled it back a bit and this is more of a realistic manageable at least for me pet room that doesn't have a bunch of animals in. So yeah I will stop waffling now and go around and show you the animals and the changes I've made to this room. So the first thing is on the outside of the room and I just bought this the other day. I've been looking for a sign to put on this door for ages and I've just not found one that I liked and this popped up when I was just looking at other things on Etsy and if you know anything about me I'm obsessed with anything mushroom related so I had to get this, I think it's so cute. So when you go in to the pet room the first thing you see is on the left and that is the rat cage, hi Kinder. So this cage is the Little Zoo Ventura and it has my three male rats, Kinder, Toast and Tiffin, and it's the double. It's not looking as good as it has done in the past because I did have an incident a couple of months ago where I had an outbreak of tropical mites and I had to throw away a lot of their stuff. So still trying to put things back in there. It's not looking too bad, but it's not as fun and active as it was before because they have had to throw away a lot of their things. So next to their cage, we have got these two IKEA storage boxes. On top is just a box full of things like their malt paste, um, disinfectant, a brush, a dustpan, bags, things like that. This is actually the mouse food in this. And then in this one, we've got the rats mix, which looks like this. And then in the bottom one, this has just got the back to nature bedding which goes in their litter trays. So just to keep this real, this does get incredibly dirty because it is right next to their cage. It gets covered in bedding and pee and stuff. And I did wipe this before filming it, but it's just never been the same since. So it does get pretty dirty pretty quickly. Probably not the best idea to have something that white right next to the rat cage. We have been in this house for a couple of years now and the staining on the walls is pretty bad. Behind the cage is a lot, lot worse, but I have tried to wipe this. I did buy specifically wipeable paint for this wall, knowing the rats were gonna go against this and they were gonna get things like their porphyrin or their pee up the wall. This paint is not wipeable, so I've done my best, um, but they will ruin your walls if you don't have like a glossy paint that you can easily wipe and wash things off it's gonna look like this eventually so that's just again keeping it realistic that that is how my walls are looking what is it now two years of having rats in this room but anyway I've just put this um fake like vine thing that I had left over up here I think it looks a lot nicer than just having a bare shelf and then all the way on the top, I have got all of my rats' paintings that they've done with their little paw prints. The only ones I've not done is my first couple of rats I didn't think to do this with, and also my three current boys. I do need to get around to doing theirs too. Then just behind that, we have got 
a painting that one of you guys did for me of one of my rats called Sunday. I really like that, so that is staying up there, but I didn't want this to be too cluttered, so any other artwork I had on there before, I have taken it and stored it for now. Then next to the rat cage, we have got the cat tree, rat tree situation. Again, a lot of the things that were on this Tiffin, could you make any more noise? A lot of the things that were on this had to be thrown away because of the whole mite situation, so it's looking a little bit more bare than it was before, but they've just got various things to climb on. They've got a little house at the bottom, and then this didn't fit in their cage this time around, so I've just zip tied this to give them somewhere to climb up. They did also used to have a big, long dig box that came out to like there, I'd say. That unfortunately had to go as well because mites again, so it's looking a bit more minimal in here. I'm not mad about it. I do like the way it's looking, but that does mean they have lost their dig box, so they will get one back eventually, but that was where that used to be. Then up on the windowsill, we've just got this tub of everything fiddly to do with the rats, so screws, washers, clips for hanging things in the cage, all of that is in there that I'm not using at the moment. And then over on this side, we've just got two jars of treats, which I don't really give them that often, to be honest. Um, so they probably need throwing away at this point, but we've just got things like banana chips, apple chips, and then these ones too. Carrying on their free room section, they've got this big wooden castle that's got some snuffle mats in the top. And then I've also just attached a foraging wheel to one of the windows. It's got these like fake reptile plants just propped up on it, just to make it look a bit more natural. And then this is supposed to connect and go this way, but honestly, I trip over that so many times that I just keep it this way now. So that is their like main free room thing. Again, they did have like boxes and like containers with packing peanuts, things like that. All of that had to go, so I do need to replace that for them. Then they also have this bird box, which I did buy to use with the mice, but it worked out to be a lot more rat size, so they do go in this and use this to kind of step up to go into there, and then I just keep a couple of like foraging toys out for them in their free room. I've got most of them stored away, so I'm not, again, tripping over them all the time, and it looks a lot less cluttered in here now. They've got a dish for pea fishing, and then just a bath mat to keep the water off the floor. This is like my place to sit. Ideally, I would like to buy more of like an armchair or something to sit in here, because more often than not, I'm just sitting on the floor and it's not very comfortable, so I would like to have a nicer chair in here, just so I'm more inclined to spend even more time in here just sitting and like watching everyone. If I can fit some sort of more comfier chair in this corner, then I'm gonna try to find one. And then I've also hung this fake hanging plant in the corner. This corner was looking a bit weird and empty because this unit, which I'll get to in a second, was up like this. And this corner was looking really, really empty. So I wanted to put something in here to make it look a bit less strange to me. I think because I'm just so used to having every inch of space filled with something which I'm trying not to do anymore. So I don't think this looks too bad in this corner. And then we also have this sign still with a little mouse on a little mushroom. So, moving round, we of course have the IKEA Calyx unit, and on top of that is now my Leopard Gecko Orbit, which I'll insert a picture of what this space looked like before. I had the IKEA Calyx up like that, and then it also had a reptile rack, which had my snake, Rue, who unfortunately passed away back in December after trying to treat an illness for such a long time, and then I also had some invertebrates and of course Orbit on the bottom, so now I just have Orbit and she is temporarily on this IKEA Calyx unit. So my plan with her is I really, really want to upgrade her. At the time when I did this enclosure, this is a large low exoterra i think and at the time that was kind of the standards for leopard geckos it's the biggest longest exoterra that you can get and that was the standard at the time 
and I do like the background and the way that I've set it up but pretty much immediately after I did that I kind of regretted not going bigger for her so I really really would like to upgrade her that's kind of next on my list I want her to be in a bigger like vivarium type setup with like a nice cupboard and things that's maybe like this big instead so that is the plan but for now just to utilize the space a lot better because she was on that reptile rack all by herself and it was just feeling really cluttered and also really sad because I was constantly thinking about my snake um, I've just temporarily put her on here but one thing I'm not entirely sure about is the whole UVB situation because I've only literally just moved her onto this cabinet and before when she was on the reptile rack I had her LED and her UVB zip tied to the shelf above and it was a bigger distance so I'm not sure now if it resting on the mesh is going to be too close to her basking spot for the UVB so I need to figure that out, I've not plugged those in yet, just to be safe whilst I figure out if that's going to be too close or not. But yeah, that is where my female leopard gecko orbit is at the moment. I think she is in that log back there, but she has a little sign. That's what she looks like. Next to her enclosure, I've just got a couple of carriers. This one is for orbit, this one is for the mice just in case there is an emergency and I need to grab them and I've got time to grab them, those are there ready. So just above her enclosure I've hung this pin board, finally I've had this for years and just not had space on the wall to hang this but now I do. So this has hopefully, if I've forgotten anyone I apologise but hopefully every single rat or mouse that I've had kind of in chronological order so it starts at the top with my first ever rats and mouse, Scampi, Rolo and Fig, and then goes all the way down to my current rats and mice that I've got at the moment. So there's not much space left on this. There's like four spaces left before I need to buy a second pin board and start that one as well. But this is so cute. I love this. I love looking at all of my old babies that have made this channel. And it feels like I've had more than this, um, but that is it. That is all of my mice and rats, past and current. So in these drawers, I've had these for like over 10 years, so they're kind of scuffed and like dirty at this point. Um, I do clean them, but they have, again, they're white, so they get splattered with like everything in this room. Um, this one has got rat hammocks in. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure because I think I need to rearrange them all again. This has got like rat chew toys, foraging toys. These I've had to condense all of my reptile supplies that were on the reptile rack. I had like four or five storage boxes, I think. All of that has now gone into the garage and I've just got like supplements and stuff in there. This is rat stuff. This is mouse stuff to be honest a lot of these most of these ones are extra mouse supplies because I just have so many there's so many like tiny cute things you can get for them compared to rats that they just take over most of the storage to be honest moving over to the last section of the room we have got my 100,000 subscriber plaque still can't believe that I that's me like that feels like a fever dream that someone else has done um, but that is where that is. I might move this in the future because what I'm planning on doing with the IKEA Calyx unit is possibly having this up there instead when Orbit's in a bigger enclosure with like a cabinet and things that might go there instead. But for now this is staying here and I've got one of my snake's old sheds which I didn't really know where to put so I've just kind of hung it on my 100,000 subscriber plaque which... It's kind of scary because this sits right above my air purifier which blows air upwards and this snake shed is going wild and crazy so kind of looks a bit haunted but I can't part with this and I don't know where else to put it so that is there. Down below that is what I call my corner of doom. This is an improvement. This was way, way worse. I have tidied this would you believe? So I've got some cork backgrounds that I don't really know what to do with anymore. I've got bags of bedding, bunch of wires, carriers, things like that. 
is all shoved in that corner and I just try not to look down there too often. If I do have a big bale of bedding, that will also go down there as well, but I currently need to go and buy one, so this is the corner of doom. Then we also have my air purifier, which I've currently turned off, just so you can hear me as clearly as possible, but this is always, always running. I think I probably need to clean this, to be honest, because it's a little bit dusty on the top, but this is by a brand called Ace Call, and they gifted this to me a couple of years ago, I think, and to be honest, it's really good. I do notice the difference in here if I haven't had it turned on. It does make a difference with the dust and my allergies, which you can probably hear in my voice standing next to the rat cage right now, but this does a really, really good job, so definitely a staple to have some sort of air purifier in this room with all of the rodents and things. It also helps them too. So, finally, this is my mouse enclosure. This is the Bucat State 100 centimeter metal stackable cage. I have modified this though. I've made a new lid to go on the top, just to give them a bit more ventilation and places to hang things than the metal one that it comes with. So, not gonna show you this too up close because the paintwork on this is really, really bad. The paint we used is terrible and peely and flaky, so need to entirely just either sand it down or make a new one at some point. But that is their enclosure. This is on an IKEA Trofast unit that again has all of their supplies in, which I'll show you in a second. But yeah, this enclosure has my six mice. I've got two neutered males, Griffin and Sphinx, and then also some females, Teak, Cedar, Birch, and Maple. I'll just give you a quick overview of the inside. They do need a deep clean at some point very soon, but they've just got a bunch of sprays and natural decorations. This cage is very, very slightly smaller than what they had before. They were in an Ikea Linmon enclosure, which I think was just a little bit deeper than this one. This one does kind of overhang very weirdly on the sides, but I've done my best with having to put them into this one because they destroyed the old enclosure, but I don't think it looks too mismatched. So these drawers under here are mostly all mouse stuff. This one has just got all of their like tiny foraging and chew toys. This one is for things like sprays and millets and flowers and treats. This drawer is like all of my little bowls, so either mouse bowls or bowls for medicine. I've also got spare medication at the back their like supplements for their waters, mite treatment, urine strips, syringes, all of that is in this one. And then these three big ones on the bottom are just all extra mouth supplies, bedding, wooden items, ceramic items. They are looking more empty than usual because I am doing a big clean at the moment. I have got some mouth supplies in the bathroom as we speak, so not really sure where they're all gonna go because they definitely are not gonna be fitting in this, but that is where my extra mouse supplies live. So behind the mouse enclosure, we have this archway that I painted when we first moved in. Don't look too closely because it's not a perfect shape. Um, we also have this shelf on the top, which I've just got a fake plant and some needle felted mice that one of you guys made for me little mouse on a mushroom and then we also have a painting of my like heart mouse pearl and then a painting that my heart mouse pearl did um it's all very pink up here which i'm not the biggest fan of the color pink but it all kind of goes quite nicely so that's the painting that she did then i've also just made a bouquet of sprays i had for the mites kind of works because i didn't have any other flowers but i think it looks kind of cute and then on the end, we have the urn for my snake, Rue, that passed away back in December. It might seem a bit strange to put this on the mouse shelf, but I didn't have any other space to put this over in like the reptile side of the room. So it kind of goes with the color scheme, but I'll just show you inside. There's nothing scary to look at. 
there we go. So I just got a Polaroid picture of her printed on the top and then another one of her sheds. And then this is her urn that's got her ashes in. So just keeping that kind of up out the way on the shelf because I didn't know really where else to put that. The very, very last thing that I do usually have in this room, you can see the hook on the wall, is like a big green wash bag that I just put all of their like dirty hammocks and stuff in. That has currently been in the wash, so that is not there at the moment, but that usually hangs on this wall. And to be honest, it's not the prettiest thing to look at, but it is really practical when you're cleaning them out to just chuck all of their like stinky hammocks and stuff in there and then keep it all contained. So that usually sits there. So yeah, that is my pet room now. As I said at the beginning of the video, I do feel so much calmer in here because there's not as much clutter or empty enclosures. I had a lot of empty exoterras that were just sat there and I was thinking, should I do something with them? I think in the last time I did a room tour, I had an empty exoterra that I was kind of teasing that I was gonna get some species of frog. And I did really, really want that species, but just currently where I'm at in my life, health-wise, other things I'm trying to focus on, it's just not the right time to have any more of that kind of animal. So that plan has gone for now, but I'm really, really happy with how kind of minimal it is in here now. I just want to focus, as I said, on the animals that I've got. Giving Orbit an upgrade is my top priority. Really, really want to get that done. I've also noticed it's kind of echoey in here now because obviously there's not as many things for the sound to bounce off of. Um, so I'm not sure there's too much that I can do about that, but thank you for sticking through this room tour. It's that time of year again where not only am I allergic to the rats, but I've also got really bad hay fever coming, so can't really talk properly at the moment. So thank you for sticking through my very allergic voice. But yeah, this is my pet room. I think I've fallen back in love with this, to be honest. It's gonna be a lot more manageable for me. And I actually enjoy coming in here now, which is the entire point. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing it too. So yeah, that is the finished pet room, how it is at the moment. Obviously the circumstances, how it's led to me reshuffling things in here are sad and I would love to have, especially my snake room back in here. But I feel a lot more calm. It's a lot less chaotic in here. And I'm excited to have a space to sit and spend time with the pets. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.